Well, as Tim mentioned, I'm Andrew Friscoff. I'm the serial extension plant pathologist at North Dakota State. Uh, but instead of talking about corn diseases and wheat diseases and my passion, I get to talk about the NDSC Pest Management app. Uh, to give a little bit of background history, uh, the first question a lot of people ask is, what is, what is this app? Well, it is the source of a kind of a mobile device that you can have your weed control information, your insecticide information, and your uh, fungicide information onto one app. And basically how it was built is uh, the three ex extension publications uh, that are annually produced in those areas were combined and entered into an app format. Um, and the reason for, uh, for doing this is we, us along with a lot of the commodity groups are asking us how can we get this information that is more readily available, um, not always having to have that hard copy of these guys sitting on your dashboard if you lose it another way. This is just another version of uh, being able to obtain the information. Uh, so with that little brief introduction, what I'm going to focus on today is give a really brief tutorial of all the features of this app, and then I'm going to go into a few specific examples of, um, say if you're looking for uh, well, since I'm a plant pathologist, uh, leaf rust and wheat, for example, how would I find that type of information using this app? Uh, so this app is available in two, two, two formats. Uh, one is it's a Droida supported, uh, so you have to download it through the Google Play Store. Or if you have an Apple product, uh, uh, it's the same way with using the Apple uh, using the Apple Store. Uh, these can be available on the smartphones, and here I'm going to you have an iPad, you can have Droid tablets anyway. Uh, this is, uh, you know, these are the features of the platforms they sit on. So there's, and I'm going to show you both, I'm going to show you both on my phone today and also on the iPad just, just to show that there's a little bit of uh, vari variation in the two platforms. So once you have it downloaded, uh, you brought to this home screen. So on this home screen, uh, it is divided by what type of crop uh, that you're looking to find pest management information located here. Then also on the left hand, it would be uh, the, your left hand side, uh, you, you find some additional information. Here it has directory tools and bookmarks. I'll come back to that later, but really I want to focus on is uh, going through the crop selection. Now, if you have an iPhone, you, your screen is not going to look exactly like this. You only will have this information. And to access this information, there will be a uh, kind of a ta tabula tabulated list in the left hand corner you click, click on, or you can uh, move your phone uh, by swiping to the right and it will drop it through. So it's just a subtle variation between the two. So as mentioned, it is organized by crop. Uh, notice we have seven crops. Not all crops are available yet. Um, we're in the process of updating the app uh, and uh, we'll be adding more information as we move forward with this. Uh, so for an example today, um, I'm going to go with the small grains. Uh, so by selecting the small grains, uh, once you make your selection, it will go down into three, uh, three additional uh, uh, pest type information. We have the diseases, insects, and weeds. And as implied, depending on what issue you're dealing with, uh, you'll collect, you, you will uh, select uh, whatever option. Uh, once again, I'm going to use the biased plant pathologist, pathologist approach and focus on diseases today. And once you select diseases, this is where you really can start narrowing your selection. Uh, here we have, uh, we have the tabs that have general info, resources, and a variety of, uh, of diseases that, uh, that can be found on wheat. So looking from top to bottom, uh, first of all, the general info. This contains all the information that you would find in the beginning of the guide. Uh, regardless if it's the plant disease management guide or the insect guide or the weed control guide, that general info is going to give you like fungicide resistance, mode of action, um, you know, any, any other supplemental information that is needed. And likewise, as you move into the other guides, it's the same format. Um, so I guess the key thing is, uh, regardless of what you choose, everything is set up in a similar manner. So if you're looking at weeds, you'll be, you'll be having the same setup, and uh, we'll both do some examples here as we go through. Um, I guess there's the resources too, I should mention. Uh, in this resources section, this is just how you can find information for, uh, let's say, the NDOM network, the extension service, uh, plant pathology department, and it'll be hyperlinked to a you know, website. Uh, so there's no way of retrieving information coming through 
um, a different route. So as you look at the diseases, uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, say we have a leaf rust problem in wheat, uh, we'll, t we'll click on the leaf rust option, uh, and here it'll try the, it'll give you the options of how you can manage it. This you need a foyer application in the middle of the season to help manage leaf rust. If you go into the herbicide realm, uh, it'll be a pre-emergence and post-emergence uh, type of option. And insecticides, you'll have like seed treatment or uh, uh, post uh, foliar applications too. So depending on what you're managing, it'll give you the options. In this case, it'll be a foliar application. Um, the next, the next slide, the next uh, selection you have is the trade names of all the available fun fungicides for uh, management of leaf rust. Uh, so as you can see, there's a variety of them, uh, and by making your selection, I'll just select Monsoon, which is a Tevriconazole generic. Um, this is this is really what you're looking for. So you know, I know there's a lot of selection processes, but it's it's really developed as kind of a stair step approach. And when you get to the to the chemical information uh, on top, you have um, the trade name Monsoon, the active ingredient. Ingredients in this case it's tebiconazole. And then we have the FRAC group, uh, the methylation inhibitors or your triazoles, which is FRAC3. Um, this is really important. What we did is we color coded it uh, with respect to each mode of action. This, you'll find this same way with the insecticide and also with the herbicide. So it's really important for in case there's resistance issues um, developing, you'll be able to not, not only recognize maybe a specific class, uh, whether if it's a um, a herbicide or a fungicide, but also you can color code it too. So it's just another way of, you know, like, oh, I can't use this because this class, uh, there's resistance that has been developed to this class of, of this chemical, so I'll make another selection. Uh, then we'll have application rates, in this case it's four ounces per acre. Uh, they have some of the other diseases that this chemical is labeled for. A spray application, and then the remarks is really uh, any, any other additional information that you may need to know. Uh, and this one, it says do not apply more than four ounces per year in uh, PHI of 30 days. So I mean, it just gives you a little bit more information. If you'd like more, uh, at the top here, it doesn't sound showing up quite, but if you select up on the related information, uh, previously remember that general information and resources. Uh, so that this is another way of getting to. So if you want information in front of the fungicide guide. Uh, you can click on general information and then you're brought back to that. Okay, um, so going back to our example, um, to get back to the main page, you, you, a lot sometimes it can create some frustration. You can hit back up in the uh, up in the upper left hand corner, or if you go right below directory and you hit the host crop. So in this case, we'll say small grains. It'll take you right back to the same. So, um, it's a neat little feature, especially if you're, uh, you know, you do want to keep hitting back, 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 and uh, it might create some frustration. So that's kind of the gist of it when it comes to how, how this looks. Um, and uh, what, what I'd like to focus on next is, remember I said in the, on this other corner here we have some other supplemental tools. Well, this is, uh, we're, we're going to visit these too. So for the tools section, this is really for all herbicides information. Um, here you have crop rotation restrictions. Um, simply you can select any type of herbicide which are looking for. This information is all found in the, in the weed control guide, but uh, this is just a different way of presenting it. Um, so let's say Raptor, for example. You have the host crops here. And then if you select on the crop, in this case, no bioassay information, but for barley, it gives you some uh, rotation restrictions if you use this uh, herbicide. So um, that's, one, that's one feature of the tool section. Uh, another one that becomes quite handy is uh, looking at, at these efficacy of herbicides on specific weed species. Now, we don't have this for the insects or diseases yet. Uh, it's something that we are looking into since those tables are available. Um, but for herbicides, uh, in this case, you, know, you can select. You know, Husky has been selected as a as a pulse application, and here you have a list of weeds um, and its relative eff efficacy on it. So N stands for no control, G is good control, F is fair, 
uh, E is for excellent. So there is, uh, you know, just another another way of looking at the uh, uh, how well these herbicides are performing on specific weed species. Uh, the last one is is the minimum rain intervals. Um, uh, really, you can just select any type of uh, herbicide and. Uh, it looks at the, the, the time from the point of application to when some type of rainfall event would happen. Uh, so, it, so it gives you the minimum uh, interval that is needed. Uh, here you can see the fungicides are listed and then the respective time interval on the, uh, on the side right next to it. So when it comes to the tool section, you know, it's really geared towards herbicides, but like I said, this is it's just launched and with the other pest categories, we're looking to uh, add more to it. Uh, this last feature is a bookmark. It is similar if you're sitting on a computer and wanted to uh, bookmark or put a favorite to a web page. Um, so going from the previous example of, of leaf rust, say uh, you wanted to, as a quick reference, just go right to leaf rust management uh, with all the fungicide options. So once you get to the main screen here, uh, as we went through the foliar application, if you hit bookmark, It'll bring up and like, what do we want to, what what do you want to call this? So in this case, I may just say rust uh, fungicides. You can make it whatever you want. There's a way of making you remember. We hit OK, and notice how it appears now, uh, right below the bookmarks. And so if we go back to the main screen, say if you just uh, just uh, launched the app onto your phone, I <coughs> uh, want to go straight to the fungicide options. You click on the bookmark, it brings you right to the page. So it's just a you know another feature of uh, of this. Uh, since I have a weed scientist, former weed scientist in the room, I'll take you through an example that I will commonly do. And say you are a corn grower and you have a common cockover problem. So how would you go about doing that? You know, from the beginning of the app to find the information. So I'll uh, take you from the beginning. Uh, you would launch the app. Select the, select the crop that you are working with, and as I mentioned, it was corn, and we'd select weeds. So, now this is a, there's a variety of weeds. Uh, don't mind the, I call it the thinking circles. Usually there's pictures there that you can select, and it will blow up, uh, like a cotyledon stage of it. Um, depending on the connection, in this case, I'm having a little bit of difficulty, but um, if one of these pictures are able to be loaded, uh, just another, we do have pictures attached to it, and it's a thumbnail picture, and you can note for future identification. Yes, Alicia. So do you have that internet in order to see those pictures? No, so r right now, I have this on airplane mode. <coughs> oh, okay. So I don't have any connection to anything, but if, if you would uh, just have it running on regular data bandwidth, it would load. Uh, but I, a lot of times I get random updates during presentations, so instead of having to click out of them, all the time. Get, so if you had like an iPad without a data plan and you're out in the field where you don't have the internet, then it would be doing this? Yes, it would be doing okay. this. The app, the, everything the app would be working, but being able to download the pictures is what uh, would be difficult in that case. Um, so anyway, uh, good question, by the way. Uh, common cockover, uh, if it's, say, we're in the middle of the season with corn, post application. What about Roundup. <laughs> so, as I mentioned before, uh, same thing as you've seen with the disease prop, uh, the disease format. Here we have color coordination of, of what the specific point of action is. Any other pertinent information, um, use rates, and uh, all information. So that's just one example of how you'll be able to find uh, that information. Yeah. So I did. I did have a thumbnail. So that in this case, this is stem rust. Um, so this is a picture, so I mean, remember when I was trying to find out those weed thumbnails be, being able to be enlarged, this would be the same, the same uh, process, you select a picture and you get like, oh here's a quick reference of what it looks like. Right now, uh, like I said we're in the process of updating, this is by no means a final finished product. Uh, we're looking to, uh, like I said, include more pictures than one of the first things we're looking to do and be more diagnostic, instead of just saying, in this case, this is a disease, but really maybe blowing it up and adding specific features if you're looking for symptoms in a field, perhaps in signs of a pathogen when it comes to on the weed identification side, uh, maybe some really 
highlighted points of what you need to look for to differentiate between grass species uh, and so forth. Um, the other, uh, the other update is going to be coming is this, how we see this app uh, right now on, on the portable device, it is being incorporated into a PC version. Um, and when I mean PCs, you can go on your computer uh, and you can, it's going to look relatively similar, maybe a few differences, but the same type of information as you see here will be available on a computer and you go through. And we're hopefully to have that available by uh, the next growing season. Uh, however, there are some software out there where you can load apps on a PC. There is there's a, there's a software available on a computer, you can download it, and by download on a computer, that means you can download apps and open them up on a computer. So that's kind of a quick fix right now where we're at, but we'll have the full PC version uh, hope, uh, hopefully available relatively, relatively quickly. Okay, so, so the question we, is, uh, is referral to resistant pests and resistant weeds. And the only location where that information would be available, I, I don't know what it is for the, the weed control guide, I haven't looked in the beginning. Okay, so here we go, herbicide resistant weeds, types of resistance, do they have specific examples? Yeah, yeah right here, okay. So, yeah, like that supplemental information, it, it, it is available, you just have to navigate through it. Um, I guess one other feature that we're going to add, if something gets, uh, say, like a Section 18 label in the middle of the season, um, we are adding an alert tab on that, on the, on the app. So it's, you know, it's today, real current, instead of waiting for the next year about hearing about it. And there is, there is a few questions regarding, now, if there's an update, what do I have to do? Do I have to get that notification, go through? Um, go through the process of downloading it again. And what we have is, you know, we have this refresh, refresh circle, I call it, up in the right hand corner. Notice that I'm not connected to the internet. So with that being said, if you're near a wireless internet, uh, you can hook up onto it. In any current updates, you would simply hit that refresh, refresh uh, circle, and um, that, that's, how you, that's how you update this app. Um, so I mean, look, for any kind of updates, we'll be looking probably Sometime this winter, probably in February, once uh, once we get all the uh, all the specialists together and any updates to the guides, which we're just finishing, we're just going to translate that right into the app. So wait, so if you want to look for it on Google Play or Apple, the best way is NDSU Pest Management. That that'd be the those are the that's the best success I've had when I've uh, played around with what's the specific words to enter from the search engine.